Yeah, I've been working on a lot of Carver boats, and today I'm going to talk about the Carver 32 of 80s Vintage. But uh, here in these pictures, you can see a lot of the newer Carvers, uh, 2000s and later. And then I show a classic aft cabin Carver 32. But today, I'm going to talk about what I can kind of consider an American classic. And this is a Carver 32 sedan. And I really kind of like this boat, at least for me, it would fit some of my needs and I see it as a very versatile type of boat. Of course, Carver boats were made in Wisconsin. They went out of business in 2021. There's a lot of these 80s vintages out there, and a lot of them are in okay condition. They can also be bought fairly inexpensively. If we think of some of the newer Carver boats, what we see is they're relatively boxy, but they're known for a very spacious interior. With this 80s vintage, what I think it kind of gives a feel of a good compromise between interior space and workable deck space. And I like this boat for the sense that it could be used for things like fishing or social engagement if you want to have a bunch of folks over and such. So I think it offers a very versatile type of function. Here in the marina what we see is that it looks pretty darn good and it's only really out when you're out at sea that this boxiness really kind of comes into it. Now carver boats overall are relatively light boats so I really wouldn't consider them ocean going but they would work inshore and of course they'd be really great as a lake boat and what we see kind of with this boat the specialty for it is its aft sedan area so walking around on top of the deck what we see is it's a lot like a lot of other power boats that the forward deck uh, isn't that accommodating in the sense that you getting up to it the the gunnels on the side are relatively narrow and it does take a little bit of acrobatics to, to get up there but once you're up there hey man this could hold a, a dinghy it can hold a bunch of people sunning themselves and such so somewhat very very functional so again you kind of have to do a uh, little bit of a balancing act to get to the aft part of it especially underway but in the marina it's not too too bad of a deal again being a light boat we do see is in rough water it doesn't have probably the best performance and such uh, compared to more ocean going boats like of course now we're in the salon area and we're moving up to the flybridge area and, and it does have a ladder and that does come into effect if you're a little bit older and stuff but if you're young, it's it's not too bad. It's usually just about three rungs. Getting up on the flybridge, uh, the, one of the big benefits of these carvers is the flybridge is high up there. So it's really good if you're a fisher person and wanting to see where the birds are, fish are schooling. Otherwise, it can hold, it can accommodate six people very comfortably, especially at the marina or anchored out this could be really fun visibility with the bimini is really great but with that many people up there especially underway it does feel a little bit top heavy again considering the overall lightness of the boat and what we see of course next to it is uh, a, a classic sea ray boat and so you can kind of compare a sea ray with these carvers and such of course the sea ray is a little bit newer and such and the carvers a little bit older so again about 10 or 15 years of performance differences one thing i will say what i like about the helm of the carver is its center in uh, on the flybridge up here so it gives you kind of good visibility for looking right and left if you have to dock and such um, so again the visibility is 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 pretty darn good and again it can accommodate passengers on either side of you so you could have three people up on the flybridge while you're motoring along the gauges are fairly standard things like tack uh, oil pressure temperature uh, voltage and even it has vacuum pressure so you can monitor a lot of your engine systems from out there also what I do see is that there's plenty of room for adding uh, other components if you if you wish 
So again, fairly functional up on the flybridge. And that makes it always kind of fun to uh, be able to modify and customize towards your own needs. This one has an old chart plotter, but still very functional. And it shows you that you do have room for uh, Navionics and other types of controls up on the flybridge. Of course, access, access going out of the flybridge is via the stairway. Again, this can be issues if you're a little bit older. And once we get into the sedan aft deck there, what we see is there's uh, plenty of storage. This has an integral bait tank. This could either be used as a propane locker if you plumb it right, or it can be, again, used as a bait, bait tank. This is just for storage here. And there's one towards the starboard and one towards the port and what we could see is this can accommodate oh about six people fairly comfortably on this this kind of aft deck you also have access to your engines via a couple of hatches here so it gives really good access there's the center one that you can kind of drop in and then there's this aft one that you could go in and that could give you good access to the uh, engine compartments. Looking at the engine, this has two 350 Merc Cruisers, so the old Chevy 350s and such. And again, it has a, a three battery bank with an 8D and uh, two, I think, Group 27 batteries for your start batteries. So it can accommodate plenty of uh, accommodations for batteries and even a small generator if you want to put one back there. Again, you'd have to plumb it for ventilation and such, but it works out pretty good. So overall, engine access is, is good. I wouldn't consider it excellent. You have to change the park spark plugs on this be, being a gas engine uh, on the outer banks of the engine towards the uh, sides. It can be a little rough getting in there and requires a little bit of boat yoga. But this is a non-injected variety, so it works out pretty good. Walking into the salon area, what we see is, again, carvers are kind of noted for their size, but uh, I would consider this kind of um, good to average. I mean, the boat has a... 12 foot beam or so just a little bit shy of that and what we do see is that we do have a settee on one area and then we have electronics and some well, bar features that we see on the other side here what this i will say one of the big benefits of this is it allows you really easy access to the electronics and wiring and such and this is actually seen on either side now this boat doesn't have a bottom helm station and a lot of boats that do have this um, so this has just the flybridge helm but a, a lot of these carvers have a a below deck uh, helm station and would be off on onto the starboard side there which is actually fairly good again the settee area can hold maybe four people very comfortably and you could always bring in some chairs but the flow through from the salon area to the back deck is actually really good and again this makes it really good for entertaining or watching kids and such so stepping down midship, what we see is we have both the galley and we also have the head there. And considering it's only a 32, this uh, galley is very, very functional. There's plenty of storage in there. This one has a nice three burner propane stove. Propane locker is actually up on the flybridge, so it's a pretty quick run to it. It has good counter space, especially again for a 32. Again, it has cabinetries for a lot of your accoutrements. It has storage for pots and pans and such, so it works out pretty good. Again, looking at some of the plumbing right here, what we see is a, it, it's easy access, and there's plenty of uh, cupboard space. So again, reflecting back on the fridge, uh, plenty of room for beverages and even food, so you can use this as a, as a food locker and such. Again, a lot of these need to be updated and such, and they are a little bit costly uh, this one runs off of not only 117 but also 12 volts so it's a really good advantage that if you're underway or having an extended trip and such
accommodations from the galley up into the salon area is pretty good there's some landing zones right up there so it's easy to serve food and again peeking out what we see is the visibility is really good that's one thing that's nice about having this kind of boxy boat if we go a little bit aft here what we see is we don't have the aft cabin variety but here we do have a bunk area that's uh in this room here and granted it might not be for everybody because you do have to kneel down to sleep but there's a few advantages of this this could be used as a great storage area or uh, what's nice about this is if you're in rough seas hey here you're a little bit below water you're on the center of the boat it's probably the most comfortable sea motion type of location on the boat for sleeping and stuff there's a few cabinets uh, in there and hanging locker so again uh, plenty of storage there's also access to your holding tanks and and water tanks down there so that works out really kind of nice so again it, it allows for accessibility of things which is always important when considering a boat especially if you're thinking about modifying or having to do repairs and such so checking out the head what we see is it's actually again for a 32 relatively spacious plenty of storage in there so you keep all your cleaning supplies and toiletries and towels and such in there with very little problem i would say it can accommodate four people's uh stuff fairly easily again if you have less it's not too bad has kind of a standard head that goes into a holding tank or you could uh, supply with a macerator pump and have an overboard uh, for it so that works out pretty good and one of the neat benefits of this is it does have a standing walk-in shower area so that's always kind of nice and it, tankage is usually around oh, 150 to 200 gallons of fresh water so again you can use that for uh, uh, rinsing off and such so you don't have to be as stingy as if you're on a, a boat with uh, lower volumes of tankage and such so yeah, very nice, very nice head area. So again, kind of the flow through from the, the head into the galley area is fairly easy. The door swing in a position where you don't feel crowded or cramped. It, it really accommodates two people really nicely, but if you do have a big party going on and everybody ends up down in the galley, you could probably put four people or so. So again, not bad accommodations for a 32-footer. And here we're peeking down into the bilge area where we actually have a sump for the shower that then can pump overboard. Again, you want to try and keep your wastewater from uh, going directly into the bil bilge. And, uh, this, this allows for better cleanup and less uh, boat funk type of smells. So good access there. Going way forward, we have our V-Birth area, and this is probably one of my biggest complaints. I mean, there's a lot of storage here, but I do find that the bunk is relatively high, so that makes it a little bit hard to get in and out. I mean, I'm over, a little over six feet, and uh, I had to do a little bit of yoga to get in there, so you're going to need a bench or a step to actually get up there. The trade-off is you have plenty of storage, so if you want to put clothes and such, there's there's plenty of room there. And in, in this boat, they have a hanging locker too, which is actually pretty good size. You could actually fit several jackets or dresses and slacks and stuff in there. Again, kind of a fairly typical V-berth. Do you see as very forward is your chain locker? Chain lockers of moderate size. It could probably accommodate oh 400 feet of a road and chain along with again we have my big test of boats is if i could sleep beam to beam in the v berth definitely on this boat i had plenty of room and i think it can accommodate somebody maybe about six four or so uh with no problem maybe six six if you push it but that's one of my big things here otherwise you could go you know fore and aft and you could accommodate two people really 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 well that's kind of the the good thing about that again the 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 bed is a little bit high so it make, made it a little bit tough so yeah that's a, a carver 32 i was very impressed with this i thought it makes a really good uh, weekend or a little bit extended type of boat 
then again with the sedan it offers a lot of versatility so i hope you guys enjoyed this and have a good time out in the ocean